test me type for nove hi guys welcome back to the platform welcome to today's video so we are heading to a video that says the polish language is this real hmm. let's see let's go find out so if you're new to the channel hi welcome thank you so much for liking subscribing leaving your beautiful and awesome comment i literally appreciate you all so much from the depth of my heart so guys let's get started <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today's topic is the Polish language, or Jan Jan Polski. Polski. as it's called in Polish. Polish is the official language of the Central European country of Poland, where 97% of the population speaks it as a native language. That makes Poland the most linguistically homogenous country in Europe. It's the second most widely spoken Slavic language after Russian with around 45 million native speakers and an additional 5 million second language speakers. As you may know, Slavic languages are a branch of the mm. Indo-European language family. Between the year 500 CE and 1000 CE, Proto-Slavic gradually diverged into dialects, and by 1000 CE there were already distinct West Slavic, East Slavic, okay. and South Slavic languages, and dialects of these three languages developed into oh. the languages of each Slavic branch. The West Slavic languages include Polish, Czech, Slovak, Sorbian, a minority language in Eastern Germany, and Kashubian, a minority language in Poland. Poland first became a state in the 10th century, around the time that Slavic was developing into various distinct languages. The unification of various Slavic tribes within one Polish state helped tie their dialects together as a single language. The Christianization of Poland took place in the decades following the creation of the Polish state, and along with that came Latin Whoa. via the Roman Catholic Church, which became the formal written language wow. and the language of the nobility. Polish continued to be the predominant spoken language among the general population, but Latin certainly had some influence on Polish because of its prestigious position. Polish was not a written language until the adoption of Christianity really? and the arrival of Latin. From that point on, vernacular Polish began to be written informally using the Latin alphabet. The oldest sample of written Polish that we know of is a list of names dating back to the year 1136. The oldest written Polish sentence that we know of dates back to 1270. There are more substantial texts from the 14th century onwards, as Polish became more commonly written. From the beginning, the Latin alphabet was insufficient for writing all the different sounds of Polish, so over time, Polish writers began using a variety of diacritics that have become part of the Polish alphabet and a characteristic part of Polish writing. During the Jagiellonian dynasty, Polish became an official language alongside Latin. Also during this time, cities were founded and administered under a German system of law, known as Magdeburg law. Due to the influence of this system of law, Numerous German words entered Polish. German loanwords in Polish include Ratusz, meaning town council, and Burmistrz, meaning mayor. Also, there had always been contact with Germanic speakers, especially in the northwestern areas, all the way back to Proto-Slavic. So there are other Germanic loanwords mm. in Polish that go back a long way. Latin remained an official language alongside Polish through the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth but Polish had gradually become more widely used by the nobility than Latin. In the 16th century, while Polish was becoming more standardized, it served as the vehicle for the golden age of Polish literature. It also became the lingua franca throughout much of Central and Eastern Europe, spoken by the ruling classes not only in Lithuania, but also in Ukraine and Belarus, which were mostly part of the Commonwealth at the time. The third official language of the Commonwealth was Ruthenian, which was spoken in the Eastern areas and would later develop into Ukrainian and Belarusian dialects. Polish was influenced by Ruthenian to some extent due to contact. Poland was erased from the map between 795 and 1918 after being partitioned between the Russian Empire, Austria, and the Kingdom of Prussia, and later the German Empire, which it was a part of. Polish ceased to be an official language anywhere, and dialectal differences grew wow. in the different occupied parts of Poland. After the First World War, the borders of Europe were redrawn, and an independent Polish state was restored. Lands which were considered historically Polish were taken back from occupying oh. powers, but not all lands. The borders were once again redrawn after World War II, with the recovered territories being given from Germany to Poland, and the Soviet Union occupying eastern areas and making them part of Belarus and Ukraine. 
Many Poles were forcibly transferred from wow. those neighboring countries to Poland. Transferred being oh. a euphemism for kicked out. This forced transfer of Poles from their homes to different dialect areas resulted in dialect leveling, the loss of dialectal differences. And transfer, in other words, expulsion of non-Poles to neighboring countries made Poland a very wow. linguistically homogenous country. Today, four main dialects of Polish are usually recognized, but the differences are now okay. slight. There's Greater okay. Polish, Lesser okay. Polish, Masovian, and Silesian, though speakers often consider themselves oh. a separate language community. And sometimes counted as Kashubian, which is generally considered a separate language, okay. but is closely related to Polish. So, what is Polish? This is like the history of how Polish language came about, okay? So, in the whole nutshell, they have, people have like five languages. Great Poland, Lesser Poland, and the Moshovik and the Kosovic. That should be five now. Yeah, so five languages relating okay 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 this is quite interesting can do well to highlight me more in the comment section i was for me i was thinking that okay polish language is just only one just one language but now i'm saying that it's it has different different um different different types yeah all right guys so let's keep on watching like pronunciation and orthography Polish writing has a number of characteristic features that are quite striking at first glance. The Polish alphabet has 32 letters, but 32. there are also seven digraphs, pairs of letters which she represent individual these. sounds. Notice that four yes. of those digraphs feature the letter Z. This yeah. makes Z the most common letter in Polish writing. And notice that there are two additional letters that are derived from Z, which appear in another two digraphs. If you include those, People seeing Polish in writing for the first time will definitely notice the abundance of Z's and Z-like letters. Mm. But those two Z-derived letters are not the only special letters in Polish. There are nine in total. This letter is pronounced mm. W, mm. while in Polish the letter W is normally pronounced B. V. Mm. These letters represent nasal vowels. More specifically, vowels followed by nasal semivowels. The exact quality of the nasal sound varies depending on the surrounding sounds and the nasal sound is normally absent before w or in the nasal e at the end of a word. Mm. For example, this word is normally pronounced sh and is only pronounced like this sh in very careful formal speech. There are some noticeably long consonant clusters in Polish. This one has a cluster of five consonants in a row, bezwzględny, meaning ruthless. Then there's this one, przestępstwo, meaning crime. It has a cluster of only four consonants, wow. but there's also a digraph in this first cluster, which makes it appear to have three consonants instead of two. So to someone looking at Polish for the first time, it probably appears to be full of long consonant clusters, even though some of them are just digraphs. Most simple Polish consonants are pronounced like their English equivalents, but note that C is pronounced as S. S and as I mentioned before, W is pronounced B. V. And also note that the letters X, V, and Q are not used in Polish. Oh. The sound X, usually represented by X in English, is spelled KS in Polish. Wow. One important feature of Polish pronunciation is hard and soft consonants, a common feature of Slavic languages. Soft consonants are generally palatalized, like a hard consonant pronounced together with a Y sound. Aside from Y and L, which are always soft, Soft consonants are indicated by an accent above the letter or by an I following the consonant. For example, S and SH, N and NY, P and P. Most of the digraphs we saw before belong to a subset of hard consonants that derive from historically soft consonants. Why do hard and soft consonants matter? Because in Polish, some inflectional suffixes are different depending on whether they are preceded by a hard consonant or a soft consonant. Most consonants, specifically obstruents, stops, affricates, and fricatives, when they appear in consonant clusters, must all be voiced or voiceless. This results in voiced obstruents becoming voiceless when they come before or after a voiceless consonant. For example, kwiat, łódka. This also happens at the ends of words. This word meaning car. Samochód. Samochód. And this word meaning doctor. Lekarz. This type Lekos. of devoicing is one of the main things that keeps Polish from being a fully phonetic Samochód. language. In other words, a language Lekos. in which one grapheme equals one sound. 
Another thing is that the distinction between a few sounds has been lost, so that now these letters are pronounced the same. Z, z, g, u. That now these letters are pronounced the same. Z, g, u. Grammar. Let's start with the word order of Polish. The unmarked or neutral Moje word order dziecko. in Polish is SVO, as in English. For Moje. example, Moje dziecko jest słodkie. Meaning, my child is cute, or my child is sweet. The word order here is exactly like in English, subject, wow. verb, complement. This sentence has no object, but the adjective here is a complement. Another example. Mężczyzna oh. je obiad. Which means, the man is eating dinner. Subject, verb, object. Notice that there is no definite article in Polish, and actually there isn't an indefinite article either. Now, this is the unmarked or neutral word order, but Polish word order is quite flexible, and elements of the sentence can be moved in order to emphasize them. In the first sentence, we could emphasize my child by moving it to the end. Słodkie jest moje dziecko. In the second sentence, we could emphasize man by moving it to the end. Obiad je mężczyzna. So this sentence is now dinner eats the man. Technically, any word order is possible, though some sound unnatural and would be most suitable for written poetry. Interesting. Okay, for the alphabet to, for the X, the V, the X, and uh, I think two other few letters that is not being used in, Pol in Polish language when you are um, writing and you are spelling. That's why it's intriguing. And... Um, the verbal pronunciation, the consonant pronunciation is quite, quite mind-blowing. Sorry about the background noise, guys. It's raining particularly here. So I hope you can hear me and um, let's keep on watching because I'm literally enjoying this. This is going to like um, give me the space to understand more about the language. Okay, Polish language, yes. Tree or something. How can these words be moved around freely like this? Doesn't that get confusing? The main reason is that Polish is a highly inflected language, and nouns, among other words, have case endings, endings that tell us the function of the word in the sentence. Because the function of the word is obvious from its ending, then we don't need to use word order or syntax to determine the function of Dziecko. the word. Dziecko means child. This is the singular form in the nominative case, which is usually used for the subject of a sentence, or a predicate adjective after a linking verb. There are six other cases in Polish. Genitive, dative, accusative, instrumental, Seriously? locative, and vocative. These are the singular forms, but there are also plural forms. It's important Dziecko. to note that Polish has grammatical gender. Dziecko is a neuter noun. In their most basic form, the nominative form, neuter nouns end in e, em, wow. a, or um. There are also masculine and feminine Boy. nouns. Masculine nouns in their nominative form usually end in a consonant. An Chłopak. example is Chłopak, meaning boy. Some case endings differ between different types of masculine nouns. Are you guys Compare me? Chłopak, a masculine person, to Bank, a masculine object. Yeah, Notice there's a difference in the accusative plural. The endings are different for masculine people on the one hand and masculine yeah. objects and animals on the other. For many nouns, this is also true wow. for the nominative plural. Also notice that the genitive and accusative singular endings are different. In these cases, the endings are different for masculine animate nouns, in other words, mm -hmm. humans and animals on the one hand, and inanimate objects on the other. Though in the genitive case, a few types of mm. nouns are exceptions. Feminine nouns in their nominative form usually end in a or e. Matka. For example, matka, meaning mother. Adjectives also agree with nouns in gender, number, and case, and they have their own sets of endings. For Moda example, moda matka means a young mother in the nominative case. But here's a phrase in the genitive case. Dziecko młodej matki. The young Dziecko mother's child. Not only the noun has a genitive case ending, but Młode so does the matka. adjective. And notice that Wrong the adjective's moda. genitive ending is Dziecko different from the nouns. Adjectives have endings for all cases, in all genders, for both singular and plural. Verbs. Polish verbs have two mm -hmm. tenses, past and non-past. But there are also two major aspects, which indicate completion of an action, the perfective aspect, or incompletion of an action, the imperfective aspect. Each verb has separate infinitives for the imperfective and perfective aspect, and then conjugations are built around those infinitives in order to indicate the tense, in other words, the time at which the complete or incomplete action is done. Let's take a look at the verb meaning to read. This is an imperfective infinitive. 
In other words, the reading is in progress or ongoing. Przeczytać. This is a perfective infinitive, meaning the reading is complete. The perfective form of verbs is derived from the imperfective form by adding a prefix to it, or sometimes by adding a suffix or changing a vowel in the verb stem. Now let's conjugate these in the past tense. You drop the mm -hmm. ch from the end of the infinitive and add one of these endings to the remaining stem. For example, ja czytałem means I was reading. In other words, the reading was ongoing at a certain point in the past. Ja przeczytałem means I wow. read. In other words, I completed the action of reading within a certain time period in the past. By the way, please note that Polish is a pro-drop language, meaning that the subject pronoun can often be left out. That's because the verb endings often make it clear who the subject is. But something to note is how the verbs are conjugated for gender, gender in the past tense. And the in the first and second person singular, there are masculine and feminine forms. The third person singular also has a neuter form. For the plural forms, the distinction is between masculine personal endings, in other words for people, and all the others. A masculine inanimate object or animal will be conjugated the same as for feminine or neuter nouns. So while a man would say, ja czytałem, a woman would say, ja czytałam. And if you're talking to a man, you would say, ty czytałeś. But if you're talking to a woman, you would say, ty czytałaś. E e e speakers e of other Slavic languages won't see anything strange about this, but speakers of Germanic and Romance languages might need to get used to this. Now let's take a look at the non-past conjugations. Non-past? What do you mean by non-past? Is it present or future? Well, that depends on whether it's imperfective or perfective. For an imperfective verb like czytać, the non-past conjugation has present tense meaning. For a perfective verb like przeczytać, the non-past conjugation has future tense meaning. Ona czyta książkę. This means she's reading a book. While this sentence Ona przeczyta książkę means she will read a book. Unlike the past tense conjugations, the non-past conjugations don't have any gender distinctions. The tricky thing about the non-past conjugation is that there isn't just one of them. There are actually four... Get me confused in um, the pronunciation uh, is the... When you're trying to speak to someone in, in... If it's a male and a female version, you there's a... At the ending of each pronunciation for a female, it's different from the male part, okay? That's what get me <laughs> confused, okay? Wow. Poland is a broad and wide um, language, okay? You need to understand every aspect of it. And um, I'm literally enjoying this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And um, let's keep on watching, guys. Four different conjugations, with virtually all verbs following one of them. Conjugation one and conjugation four are characterized by an E vowel in the third four. person singular form. Conjugation what? two by an I vowel in the third person singular form and conjugation three by an A vowel a. in the third person singular. The perfective non-past form is sometimes referred to as the simple future. There's another compound future tense that expresses the imperfective future. In other words, an action that is ongoing or repeating in the future. Ona będzie czytać książkę. Ona this sentence means she will be reading a book. Paska. It's formed by using the future tense of Bitch. the word meaning mm. to be, followed by the imperfective infinitive. Bitch is an irregular verb be. using a different verb stem in the past, present, and future forms. Here's an example in the present tense. Nie jestem Polakiem. This means nie, nie I'm jestem. not Polish. Nie, nie and as a Polanki. quick side note, here we see how Polish negation works. You simply place the negation particle nie, nie. before the verb. For the verb. Now that we've examined wow. some of the major features of Polish, let's take a look at a few more sentences and see what we find. This sentence means my father reads two books every day. Mój ojciec codziennie czyta dwie książki. Word for word it's My father, every day, read two books. First off, we see a possessive adjective before the noun meaning father. Possessive adjectives in Polish are inflected for the gender and number of the noun. Here the word ojciec meaning father is masculine and singular. So the possessive is in its masculine singular form. And ojciec is in the nominative case. Next, codziennie is an adverb meaning every day. The word for day is dzień. dzień. Next, we see the third person masculine singular present tense form of the verb. Next, we see the number dwie, which dwie. means two. Numbers one to four in Polish have different forms depending on the case and gender of the noun they are referring to. Dwie. Really? Is feminine and is used for nominative and accusative case. 
Here it's the accusative. The number is feminine because the word for book is feminine. Książki. Is the plural form used for nominative and accusative cases. And here it's the accusative. A moment ago I mentioned that numbers 1 to 4 have different numerous forms. Mm -hmm. Numbers higher than 4 have only two forms. When counting masculine personal nouns, they are in the genitive case, and the nouns they refer to are in the genitive case, and when counting all other nouns, they are in the nominative accusative case. But the noun is still in the genitive case. So if we change the number in this sentence, say from 2 to 5, the sentence would look like this. My father reads five books every day. Mój ojciec codziennie czyta pięć książek. The number five has two forms. Pięciu. For Pięciu. masculine people and Pięć. for Pięć. all others, including objects like books. Książek. This noun is in the genitive plural form. And one wow. more sentence. This sentence means everyone likes him because he often laughs. Wszyscy go lubią, bo często się śmieje. Word for word it's everyone, him, they like, because, often, reflexive pronoun, laughs. First we see the pronoun meaning everyone. Pronouns in Polish have different case forms. Since this is the subject of the sentence, it's in the nominative case. Next, we see a personal pronoun meaning mm. him. Personal pronouns also have different case forms. This one is in the accusative case. There are two other accusative forms. Jego, niego, go. Is used when the pronoun is not being emphasized. Lubią. Is the third person plural form of the verb lubić, meaning lubić. to like. This verb belongs to conjugation two and has an I vowel in the third person singular. Next we see bo, bo. a conjunction meaning because. And after that we see Często. an adverb Często. meaning often. Next we see a reflexive verb meaning he laughs. Polish has lots of reflexive verbs, meaning that both the doer and the receiver of the action are the same. That may not always be obvious in terms of meaning, but in terms of grammar that's how it works. This word się is a reflexive pronoun which you simply add to the verb to form the reflexive. It has only one form. Finally, something simple in Polish. The verb here is in the third person singular present tense, and this verb belongs to conjugation one. Let me take this part of the sentence and ask a question about it. Czy wszyscy go lubią? Meaning, does everyone like him? The way you ask yes or no questions in Polish is very simple. You simply add the question marker czy. czy. Let's formulate another question. This means, who do they like? Kogo lubią? This is an open-ended question Kogo using an interrogative lubią? pronoun meaning who. Interrogative pronouns in Polish have different case forms. This one is in the accusative case. In the nominative case, it takes a different form. So if you wanted to ask who likes him, it would be Kto go lubi? Kto? Is the nominative form. Honorable mention. This is a last minute addition to the video, but several Polish speakers have asked me to include this particular feature of the language. When talking about the presence of something in Polish, you use the verb być, meaning to be. For example, on tu jest, means he is here. That seems straightforward. The unusual part is the negative form. Nie, nie ma go, nie ma go. Not it has him here. So this is like saying it doesn't He's have not him here. here. But who but is it? Not it has I don't know. Him here, like, but I suppose it's no. like a dummy subject in English, like when we say it's sunny. It doesn't really refer to anything. As you can see, Polish is an extremely interesting language, but Very. it's also one that many learners find daunting and intimidating. But as with any language, there are people who learn it, whether they move to Poland or they're simply deeply interested in Polish culture. Those people didn't learn everything about the language all at once. They learned certain pieces first, then they learned other pieces afterwards, until eventually they had a fuller picture of the language. So don't let the details of Polish scare you off if you have the interest and the motivation to go for it. The question of the day. To native speakers of Polish, what additional features of Polish would you like to tell us about? For example, are there any features of informal speech that you would like to share? And to students of Polish, what do you find most challenging about the language? Do you have any tips on how to deal with it? If you enjoyed this video, then please check out the various Lang Focus. Wow, this is quite interesting. And um, hold on, let me carry this thing up so that you guys can hear me more. Because the noise, I feel the noise is much. This is quite interesting and I hope you enjoyed this video, okay? And uh, he said something about the students. What do we find challenging? The, where I find challenging is the... Um, the, when you're addressing a male and a female, okay, the chair and the ch the car, that is the the ending of the I and the ending of the A, okay, I find it very, very um, challenging, okay, when speaking to a male and when speaking to a female, how to 
pronounce a particular word, how to say a particular word to a female and how to say a particular word to a male. This is quite interesting. Polish language is a very, very broad language. You need to explore a lot, okay, for you to get it right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Sorry about the background noise. It's quite raining here, okay? And I will see you all in my next one. Jacquem, do bisogna.